tree of life and awesome mystery, in your death we are reborn. Though you die to all of history, still you rise with every morn. Still you rise with every Seed that dies to rise in glory, may we see ourselves in you. If we learn to live your story, we may die to rise anew. We may die to rise. We remember truth once spoken, love passed on through act and word. Every person lost and broken wears the body of our Lord. Where's the body of Let us continue our prayer in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. Brothers and sisters in Christ, Lent has begun. Let us ask for the gift of an honest and holy Lenten season. My dear friends, we just gathered this past Wednesday to receive the ashes on our foreheads reminding each one of us that this is a penitential season, a season where we enter into penance and ask for God's forgiveness. And so let us do so today by recalling our sins and asking for God's mercy. Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, Almighty God, through the yearly observances of Holy Lent, that we may grow in understanding of the riches hidden in Christ and by worthy conduct pursue their effects through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of Genesis. The Lord God formed man out of the clay of the ground and blew into his nostrils the breath of life. And so man became a living being. Then the Lord God planted a garden in Eden in the east and placed there the man whom he had formed. Out of the ground, the Lord God made various trees grow that were delightful to look at and good for food, with the tree of life in the middle of the garden and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Now the serpent was the most cunning of all the animals that the Lord God had made. The serpent asked the woman, Did God really tell you not to eat from any of the trees in the garden? The woman answered the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees in the garden. It is only about the fruit of the tree in the middle of the garden that God said, You shall not eat it or even touch it, lest you die. But the serpent said to the woman, You certainly will not die. No, God knows well that the moment you eat of it, your eyes will be opened, 
and you will be like gods who know what is good and what is evil. The woman saw that the tree was good for food, pleasing to the eyes, and desirable for gaining wisdom. So she took some of its fruit and ate it. She also gave some to her husband, who was with her, and he ate it. Then the eyes of both of them were opened, and they realized that they were naked. So they sewed fig leaves together and made loincloths for themselves. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The responsorial psalm is number 51, 51. Be merciful, O Lord, for we have sinned. 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 Have mercy on me, God, in your kindness, in your compassion, blot out my offense. Oh, wash me more and more from my guilt and my sorrow, and cleanse me from all of my sins. Be merciful, O oh Lord, for we have sinned. Be merciful, O oh Lord, for we have sinned. My offenses, truly I know them, and my sins are always before me. Against you alone have I sinned, O Lord. What is evil in your sight I have done? Be merciful, O Lord, for we have sinned. Be merciful, O Lord, for we have sinned. Create in me a clean heart, O God. Put your steadfast spirit in my soul. Cast me not away from your presence, O Lord, and take not your spirit from me. Be merciful, O Lord, for we have sinned. Be merciful, O Lord, for we have sinned. Give back to me the joy of your salvation. Let your willing spirit bear me up, and I shall teach your way to the ones who have wandered and bring them all home to your side. Be merciful, O Lord, for we have sinned. Be merciful, O Lord, for we have sinned. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. <clears throat> Brothers and sisters, through one man, sin entered the world, and through sin, death. And thus death came to all men, inasmuch as all have sinned. For up to the time of the law, sin was in the world, 
though sin is not accounted for when there is no law. A death reigned from Adams to Moses, and even though over those who did not sin, after the pattern of the trespass of Adam, who is the type of the one who was to come. <clears throat> but the gift is not like the transgression, for if by the transgression of the one the many died, how much more did the grace of God and the gracious gift of the one man, Jesus Christ, overflow for the many? And the gift is not like the result of the one who sinned. For after one sin, there was the judgment that brought condemnation. But the gift, after many transgressions, brought acquittal. For if by the transgression of one, death came to reign through that one, how much more will those who receive the abundance of grace and the gift of justification? It'll come to reign in life through the one Jesus Christ. In conclusion, just as through one transgression condemnation came upon all, so through one righteous act, acquittal in life came to all. For just as through the obedience of the one man and the many who made sinners, so through the obedience of the one, the many will be made righteous. The word of the Lord. Glory to you, Word of God, Lord Jesus Christ. Glory to you, Word of God, Lord Jesus Christ. Your words, O Lord, are spirit and life. You have the words of everlasting life. Glory to you, word of God, Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. At that time, Jesus was led by the Spirit into the desert to be tempted by the devil. He fasted for 40 days and 40 nights, and afterward he was hungry. The tempter approached and said to him, If you are the Son of God, command that these stones become loaves of bread. He said in reply, It is written, one does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes forth from the Father's, from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him to the holy city and made him stand on the parapet of the temple and said to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down, for it is written, He will commend his angels concerning you, and with their hands they will support you, lest you dash your foot against a stone. Jesus answered him, Again it is written, You shall not put the Lord your God to the test. Then the devil took him up to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world in their magnificence. And he said to them, All these I shall give to you, if you will prostrate yourself and worship me. At this, Jesus said to him, Go away, Satan. It is written, The Lord your God shall you worship, and him alone shall you serve. Then the devil left him, and behold, angels came to minister to him. The Gospel of the Lord. 
Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Well, a very blessed uh, and joyous first Sunday of Lent to each of you. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, many of us gathered together on Wednesday to receive the ashes that we traced on our foreheads uh, for Ash Wednesday, marking the very first day of our Lenten journey, our 40-day journey into Lent. And uh, it was a, a very wonderful and, uh, and penitential day. I oftentimes look forward to Lent this time of year as kind of being a, a little bit of an escape from the busyness of our routine. It gives us an opportunity to kind of break away from what we normally find ourselves doing in preparation for the coming of Christ. It really should be a season that we allow ourselves to alter our schedules just slightly, giving ourselves a greater opportunity to pray and to fast and to give alms. Lent should be an opportunity where we can pull back from the craziness and the busyness of our life and say, I'm going to set aside this time for myself. I'm going to give myself this time that I need to enter into a deeper relationship with God. Some of us do that well, others don't do that as well, but nonetheless we are all called to that deeper sense of of holiness, that God has invited us into the garden so that we may enjoy the lavish gifts that he desires to share with each of us. I don't know about you, but as I was reading uh, in preparation for Mass today, I, I couldn't help but think about the beautiful gift that the Garden of Eden was. And it took me back to my, my days as a child growing up at home, and it reminded me of my dad's garden and just how perfectly my dad would have everything aligned in his garden. The tomato plants, the lettuce, the wonderful delicious uh, cabbage, and then the radishes and everything, pickles, all in their proper order, all in their proper space, all coming due in their proper season. Now I know it was a lot of work for my dad, he worked tirelessly in his garden each and every day, making sure that there, were not, there was not a weed to be found, that each of the weeds were extracted and that the plants were watered properly and given their, the best success they could have at growing as well as they could. My dad was a great caretaker of his plants, and there were very few of them that didn't end up surviving and thriving and bearing much fruit. The Garden of Eden had that same potential, did it not? That God had entrusted Adam and Eve with a wonderful gift of plants and animals around them to be, uh, to be used for their, at their disposal. The Garden of Eden had the same opportunity to grow and to flourish and to bring about good. And yet, human beings chose just the opposite. They chose evil over good, and it was the serpent that tempted human beings away from goodness in order that they, that they may chase that elusive gift of what was called wisdom in our book today. They desired to gain wisdom. How wise is our age today? That elusive gift of wisdom that was promised by the serpent didn't lead them to anything that was good. In fact, it led them further away, and they realized quickly that they had been deceived. That the true gift that they had received was the gift of the garden itself, and that anything that the serpent would promise them, anything that the evil one would promise them would be deceiving and would only, would only lead them to a darker understanding of what it meant to be fully human. This past week, last weekend, we had Christopher West here talking about the theology of the body, and he shared a simply beautiful message about what it means to be fully human. 
and he used the language of St. John Paul II's writings on the theology of the body. And he reminds us that from the very moment of creation, humankind was set apart, that we were set apart for something very special, that each one of us has been created in the image and likeness of God, and that each one of us bears a very special responsibility that it is our task to make sure that we get ourselves to heaven, that we work here on earth to make sure that we, we work together as a community of believers to share in the burdens of this life so that we may support one another in our journey of faith and that we may not have anything to fear, that we may not turn away in shame from the beauty that God has laid before us. For the garden that God continues to, to tend for us is one of great goodness and great bounty. The garden that God has prepared for each one of us does not reveal the negativeness that we are accustomed to seeing around us, but rather we are set free when we look at the bountiful harvest that God has in store for us. Many of us are tempted to take the easy path, Jesus could have easily been tempted in our gospel reading today by the serpent after his 40-day journey of fasting. Jesus could have easily taken up this, the evil one on any number of accounts. He could have taken up the devil as he stood upon that parapet and looked over and was promised everything that, he, that the devil could give him. Jesus easily could have given up and succumbed to the test that he was putting him through as he stood up upon that very high mountain and was promised the kingdom of the world by the, by the evil one. But Jesus didn't. He didn't give in to that sin and temptation, and each one of us should resist it as well. For our life becomes clearer, our mission becomes more resolved, and we are strengthened when we find ourselves resisting that temptation of sin. For those of us who may be living in sin for a long time, we know that we have the wonderful sacrament of reconciliation. We have the gift of confession. It is a wonderful and beautiful sacrament that many Catholics are taking a part of and rediscovering for the first time in maybe one year or five years or ten, twenty, or even thirty years. For Christians, it becomes a way of us to reconcile ourselves with God and to seek that gift of forgiveness. Let us make it our care this Lent to look at new ways that we can discover God's mercy, that we can avail ourselves with the wonderful gifts that God has shared with us so that we may prepare our hearts and our minds for that true gift, a share in Christ's resurrected glory. What more could we ask for? What more could we hope in than to share with Jesus the wonderful gift his heavenly Father has promised him, and he promises us that one day we shall share eternity with him, and those beautiful words will be shared with each of us. Well done. Well done, my good and faithful servant. Enter into the kingdom that I have prepared for you. Let us all please stand then and profess our faith together as we have the confidence and the freedom to say, I believe, believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, through God from through God, begotten, not made, born substantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. <clears throat> he suffered death and was buried, and was again on the third day in fulfillment of the scriptures. 
He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who together and the Son glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess the resurrection of the body and the life of the world to come. Amen. As Jesus entered the desert, so we are invited to follow him into the desert of Lent. Hear our prayer, hear our prayer. God of mercy, hear our prayer. Hear our prayer, hear our prayer. God of mercy, hear our prayer. For Francis, Bishop of Rome, and for all of the bishops of the world, as they lead us on our Lenten journey of conversion, hope, and renewal. <clears throat> for peace throughout the world, for the elimination of violence and oppression, for the faithful, for the elect, catechumens, and for the candidates that they respond to the sacredness and the challenge of this season of purification and enlightenment. For those who are hungry and homeless, may they know relief and companionship through the ministry of our worshiping community. For our parish, that we may be strengthened in our devotion to Eucharistic adoration. And for all who have died this week, John Baton and Helen Tenley, and especially for those remembered at this Mass, Jack and Dolores Kosciuszki. And for all the prayers that we hold in the silence of our hearts, we pray. Almighty God, in all our trials and temptations, may we call on you, confident that you are always ready to help us. For we ask this through Christ our Lord. Our preparation hymn is number 691. capture you and famine will bring you no fear under his wings your refuge is faithfulness your shield and he will raise you up on eagle's wings bear you on the breath of dawn make you to 
shine like the sun and hold you in the palm of his hand. You need not fear the terror of the night nor the arrow that flies by day. The thousands fall about you Near you it shall not come And he will raise you up On eagle's wings Bear you on the breath of dawn Make you to shine like the sun Please stand and pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. Give us the right dispositions, O Lord, we pray, to make these offerings for which, for with them we celebrate the beginning of this venerable and sacred time through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. By abstaining forty long days from earthly food, he consecrated through his fast the pattern of our Lenten observance and by overturning all the snares of the ancient serpent, taught us to cast out the leaven of malice, so that celebrating worthily the Paschal mystery, we might pass over at last to the eternal Paschal feast. And so with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise as without end we acclaim. Holy Holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full, are full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes, who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. For at the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Mm -hmm. 
the mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and, and profess your resurrection until you Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Jerome, our bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with St. Joseph, her most chaste spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. 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 At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who fess against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin, and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Thank you, and let us offer each other a sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. 
Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Let us pray. Renewed now with heavenly bread, by which faith is nourished, hope is increased, and charity strengthened, we pray, O Lord, that we may learn to hunger for Christ, the true and living bread and strive to live by every word which proceeds from your mouth through Christ our Lord. Just a few announcements for you if you'd like to be seated for one moment. Catholic Relief Service's rice bowls offer an opportunity for your family to engage in the spiritual pillars of Lent. We encourage you to feel free to take one of those rice bowls home with you. They should be still available in the back of church uh, on a first-come, first-served basis. The first virtual workshop for lectors um, is Wednesday, March 8th at 6.30 p.m. in Holy Family Hall. This is for all lectors. There are more details available on our website, or you probably could talk to Paul about that as well. The St. Vincent de Paul Soup Du Jour fundraiser is this weekend. Carryouts are available after Mass today. We, enjoy, uh, we encourage you to enjoy some delicious soups from the area restaurants and support those who are in need uh, in our area. So we definitely encourage you. Uh, soup du jour from St. Vincent de Paul. Always a great fundraiser for them, but even better for us because we get to enjoy some great soup, right? So we encourage you to enjoy that as well. Um, also to note the sale of St. Joseph and St. Mary's schools has been finalized. The sale price was $650,000. The buyer is Parish School Apartments LLC. $57,000 of the proceeds have been used for the new heating plant in St. Mary's Church. $100,000 in the form of a matching grant will be sent to St. Mary's Springs Academy for their new chapel. The Facilities and Maintenance Committee and the Finance Council are considering using the remaining proceeds to undertake different ma uh, deferred maintenance projects such as parking lot resurfacing at St. Mary's Church, which would take place after the completion of the construction project, and also a new roof on Sacred Heart Church. And so those are both fairly large projects that would need a significant amount of money invested in them, but nonetheless they go to help our worship sites and to, uh, to keep them well maintained. If you have any feedback or any questions or comments, they may be directed to any, uh, either myself or Joe Bird, and I know that we'd be happy to answer any questions that you may have regarding that. So let us all please stand. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Let us go in the peace of Christ. Our closing hymn is number 686. Blessed be the Lord. Blessed be the Lord, blessed be the Lord, the God of mercy, the God who saves. I shall not doubt 
the dark of night, nor the arrow that flies by day. He will release me from the nets of all my foes. He will protect me from their wicked hands. Beneath the shadows of his wings, I will rejoice to find a dwelling place secure. Blessed be the Lord, blessed be the Lord, the God of mercy, the God who saves. I shall not dawn of him the dark of night, nor the arrow that flies by day. I need not shrink before the terrors of the night, nor stand alone before the light of day. No harm shall come to me, no arrow strike me down, no evil settle in my soul. Blessed be the Lord, blessed be the Lord, the God who knows me, the God who saves. I shall not fear the dark of night, nor the arrow that flies by day. 